A park ranger stands forward-facing in uniform of a tan flat hat, green sweater, and green trousers. The ranger stands in a mowed grassy area with a black cyclone fence, abandoned industrial building, and parking lot behind the ranger. In the distance, some ways, rises Lookout Mountain. Hello, my name is Brian Autry and I'm one of the rangers at Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park. As you can see, uh, today we're not actually in the park, but here we are standing uh, down along the Tennessee River Walk between uh, Broad Street and Interstate 24. Now you can see rising behind me Lookout Mountain. But one of the reasons why we're here today is to, if you'll notice there on the plateau, uh, there is a white house there. Now that house uh, was the Robert Craven's house. Robert Craven, uh, pictured here in this photograph, he is uh, uh, prematurely uh, balding. He's, he's sitting prematurely balding uh, and thin hair, full beard, wearing a civilian jacket, uh, vest, white shirt, and a necktie. Now, his, he's like I say, he's one of the first industrials here to Chattanooga, and he will come here uh, build an iron furnace, that, which is uh, located over there today where the Hunter Museum of Art is. Uh, this furnace was actually called the Bluff Furnace. Uh, pictured here in this uh, photograph, you'll see it's a two-story building with a smokestack there. Uh, part of that smokestack can still be seen today. So um, this is a, this, where this house stands today, a house stood there uh, in uh, 1863, and this will be some of the, uh, this will be one of the places where some of the hardest fighting on Lookout Mountain takes place. So let's go look at the house. The park ranger now stands forward facing in a mowed grassy area with a large rock protruding from the ground immediately behind the ranger. A rock wall is to the ranger's left, and behind the ranger is a small stone house and a large two-story white wooden house with a porch along the front. Welcome back. So now here we are uh, at Robert Craven's house. Now this house was located halfway up Lookout Mountain on that plateaued section of the mountain. Uh, so uh, if you kind of use your imagination, uh, what you would have seen uh, at this time in 1863 uh, you would have seen some outbuildings out here on the grounds, uh, probably a barn, maybe a smokehouse. But then again, you would actually seen too a uh, about a hundred acre um, orchard of peach trees and apple trees. Now the family would uh, this was their main uh, staple as far as what they grew here and what the, the family didn't use. They would take that to market and sell. Uh, and also you would have actually seen too that uh, Robert Cravens was, uh, was actually uh, clearing some, some more land and he would take that uh, brush and stuff and, and stack it up in piles and then he would burn that using that charcoal to fire his bluff furnace with. Uh, now thinking about that bluff furnace when uh, from this point right here where uh, Robert Cravens lived, uh, he would have made a trip into town to the uh, uh, about a two hour trip into town when he went to his bluff furnace. Uh, later on, like I say, he was not going to uh, be doing that trip every day. Uh, later on, he would have contracted that uh, bluff furnace out and he would have visited that uh, business uh, from time to time, but it would have been about a two hour uh, um, trip. Now out here too, you would have seen a, a the spring that actually uh, Robert Cravens, being the, the engineer basically that he was, uh, he, he was an innovator that he actually piped that water across the yard here into uh, the dairy back here. Now this, this right here is original to the first house. Uh, the, the upper floor here is the kitchen down under it, uh, basically was what they call the dairy. Uh, that water would have ran into that, uh, there's a big trough down there that they, that they kept the eggs and the milk in to keep it fresh from that cold water from the spring. Now, uh, if you look at the house here, now just bear in mind, this is not the original house. Uh, the original house was a one story that you can see here uh, in this sketch that Theodore Davis did, one of the Civil War artists. 
Uh, he is uh, out here uh, on the western part, or the, yes, the western part of the yard. Looking back this way, you'll see a Union soldier firing uh, toward uh, the, the house. Then you also see the Confederates retreating uh, away from the house. So, but the main thing is, notice that house, it being a one story. Uh, today, it is a two story. Uh, that original house being built in 1856, uh, so it's, it's uh, going to be in jeopardy during this battle. Now, uh, Jesse Craven, uh, Craven is one of, or actually Mr. Craven's son, he is going to talk a little bit about uh, the family uh, being here uh, during this siege. Uh, uh, and there was going to be some fire to get into the house even before the time of the battle. Uh, so let's go to the back porch and, and listen to see listen to what uh, Jesse Cravens uh, had to say about the family during the actual battle. The park ranger now stands forward facing against a white wood wall to his left and a white wood railing to his right. Behind the ranger is a small brick house with white wood railing leading up a stairway to it. Okay now here we are standing here on the back porch of the Cravens house but as I was mentioning earlier, uh, Jesse Cravens, uh, Mr. Uh, Cravens' uh, son, uh, tells a little bit about uh, the, the family's experiences before the actual battle happened here on the mountain. Uh, with the Union Army uh, having an artillery placement here uh, on the end of Stringer's Ridge here at Moccasin Bend, uh, the uh, crew there was able to reach the house here uh, very easily uh, with their cannons. So, there was a few shots I think went through the house, uh, but it got to the point actually that the family would place somebody out here as, as a ba basically a, 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 a lookout to watch for the smoke coming off of those guns there. Uh, if smoke was seen coming out of the end of those cannons, uh, that was a real good indication that it might uh, actually be fired at the house. So Jesse said that they would they would see the smoke and then they would run uh, out of the house, wherever they were at, to the uh, dairy here. Now you'll see the dairy here is made out of some very thick uh, sandstone. The walls are very, very thick. So this would have been a very good uh, bomb-proof shelter basically for the family. Uh, um, also, uh, there is an account uh, too of Robert Craven's granddaughter. Uh, she's you know, saying that they, they were here the day of the, the battle starting, uh, they um, ran out of the house. She even mentions that uh, General Walthall actually helped them get out of the house. Uh, they were not able to get to the dairy, but they took come out here and hid behind some big boulders. Now, uh, the house is, is going to be uh, damaged a whole lot during this battle, but the, the main uh, damage that will come to the house, uh, as you can see here in this picture here, uh, basically the stud walls standing, it pretty much it's all that's left. The chimneys will be standing. Uh, a lot of people think that the house actually burned, but you can tell by this picture here, the house didn't burn because fire will not leave the studs standing. So what happens basically to, to the house, uh, like I say, the most damage comes after the battle because You've got these, uh, uh, what I call the paparazzi at, that camps out here in the yard. Uh, the, the guys from Harper's Weekly, uh, they come, uh, they're called the Bohemian Club. They're journalists, uh, uh, photographers, and you can see from this picture here what's basically, this, this picture is actually taken by one of those uh, men. Uh, the house uh, is just, it's demolished. Uh, so the, what will happen is that they, they well, sometimes uh, there's a lot of rain going on here. Uh, so, you know, if you're camped out here in the yard and you are you don't want to be sleeping in mud, so what would happen a lot of times is the guys would come and tire boards off the house, floor their tents with it, and you'd also have a lot of Union soldiers that may come back up here, uh, tire boards off the house and carve in it by the little Lookout Mountain or the White House on Lookout Mountain and take that back to uh, the uh, home for souvenirs but now as far as the family 
Uh, Robert Cravens, after he leaves here, he will. He had bought another farm down in Ringo, Georgia. The uh, family moves there, and, and they will not come back here until after the war is over. Not, not the battle, but the war in 1865. Uh, uh, so. Uh, how did Mr. Cravens uh, rebuild this house? Uh, he comes back here in 1866, like I said. Uh, he finds his uh, house in total destruction. Uh, the, the blast furnace has been uh, just obliterated. Uh, but uh, he needs, and, and Mr. Cravens got plenty of money, but I guess a lot of it's tied up. So he needs some cash money to, to build this house back for him and his family. Uh, so what will happen is he'll go down here to uh, to Chattanooga. The Union Army, uh, uh, you know, is there in in Chattanooga. Uh, so there will have there will be a big auction, and Mr. Cravens will go down and he will uh, he will actually bid on a lot uh, of an L O T uh, of baggage wagons that surplus from the Union Army. He will win that uh, that bidding, and he will refurbish those wagons, resell them, and he will make a profit. Uh, I have read somewhere that uh, he made about a $1,500 profit. So that $1,500 is what you see uh, that we're standing here now at the house that he built with that money. So uh, let's go from here now and, and go into the house and kind of see what a family uh, during that time uh, would, have, uh, would have lived in. The park ranger now stands forward facing in a room. In front of the ranger is a round wooden table with chairs around the table and books on top. In the back corner is a couch and to the left of the ranger is a small wooden table and bookcase. Behind the ranger is a fireplace and on the mantel is a pendulum clock and on the wall a small painting. To the right of the ranger is another couch. We are now standing on the interior of uh, Robert Craven's home, uh, this home he built in 1866, uh, and we are currently standing here in the formal parlor. Now this uh, room here would have been uh, the uh, place where formal parties, uh, Mr. Craven and his wife Caroline, she would, uh, they would actually uh, entertain their guests here, and you can tell by what's the furniture that's in the room. Now, it is important to note that this furniture that you see here today uh, is period furniture. None of this belonged to the Cravens, but it is the style of furniture that um, you would have seen at this, at this time in our history. Um, Mr. Cravens with his, you know, he was a man of means, uh, made plenty of, of money uh, in the iron business. So you see the pieces here are a little bit more uh, finer than than uh, your standard pieces. Uh, the harpsichord here. Uh, this is not a piano. It's a harpsichord. Uh, during these parties and entertaining uh, sessions, that uh, there would probably be uh, music being played also. So now we're, let's go back to the uh, family room uh, and uh, show you a little bit about uh, what the uh, everyday living. Uh, experience would have been like. The park ranger now stands forward facing in a different room. Behind and to the right of the ranger is a wooden bookcase with the doors closed. To the immediate right is a grandfather clock. Behind and to the left of the ranger is a fireplace and on the mantel are a small box and a candle lantern. On the wall above the mantel are three photographs. I am standing here now in the uh, family room or the sitting room, uh, which is basically our equivalent today to a, a living room. Now this is where the uh, everyday uh, living would have taken place for the family getting together and sitting together, maybe reading together. Uh, but this is that room that this would have taken place in. Uh, one thing I want you to note is, is here uh, is the, the windows throughout the house and the doors are uh, adjacent to one another. Uh, this would have allowed uh, air flow through the house, especially here on the side of Lookout Mountain. Uh, the thermals in the morning and the evening would have blown through the house here and, and that would have been a very good uh, uh, form of air conditioning, I guess, if you will. 
Uh, but the other thing too is, is that uh, with these winds here on the mountain, this house would get very cold. So you will see here that uh, each room uh, did have a fireplace in it. Uh, so uh, again, uh, this where a lot of the family time would have been uh, spent together. So from here now, we're going to go on into the uh, uh, dining uh, room. The park ranger now stands forward facing in a different room. To the right of the ranger is a small wood table under a window. Next to it is a wood chair. Behind and to the left of the ranger is a wood china cabinet with the doors open and with pieces of china on the shelves. In front of the ranger is a rectangular wood table with wood chairs around the table. If you remember, uh, like I said earlier, uh, Mr. Cravens built this house here in 1866, and he will add a second story to, the, to this house. Uh, currently, uh, just above the, each room here on the first floor is a bedroom, so you had three bedrooms on the second story. Now, we are currently standing here in the family dining room. This is not a, a formal dining room, but this is the dining room that the family will uh, uh, eat every meal in. If they are entertaining, they are entertaining here in this, in this dining room. But you'll look around here uh, in this dining room, you will notice that there is a fireplace in the dining room. Now there is no cooking that, will, that takes place here in this uh, room at the time. Uh, the actual cooking took place out here in the yard through this door here. Uh, the, the dairy out there was where the kitchen was located. You, you would do that because of two reasons. One being the safety aspect of it. You would, if one caught on fire, you would much rather have the kitchen to catch on fire than you would the, the main house here. And then the other reason would be uh, just the heat. You can imagine July, August, September, how hot it gets, how hot it would be in the house itself. Uh, to maintain a fire. Now, as I look here uh, around the room here, I think about uh, if these walls could talk, you know, what, the, what they might say. I'm sure that, that these walls heard a lot of conversation, uh, the quality time during uh, the family sitting here in this room uh, taking a meal. Now, uh, Mr. Cravens, for the rest of his life, he will uh, live here at the house. He will die in December of 1886, and Caroline lives uh, until 1893. Uh, after her death, the uh, property gets uh, sold to Adolph Ox, who was the publisher of the Chattanooga Times. He will also later on become the publisher of the New York Times. And uh, after that, he will uh, donate the property to the National Military Park. Uh, so this gives us the opportunity to uh, protect, preserve, and interpret uh, Mr. Craven's uh, family and, and life as he lived here in Chattanooga. So we hope you enjoyed the uh, program. Uh, we hope that you will continue watching the uh, programs for the commemoration of the Battles for Chattanooga and the 157th anniversary. Two of the images shown in this video are described as follows. Image number one would be a brick spring house located in the side of the mountain with thick vegetation around it. Image number two is the inside of the spring house showing a water trough catching water from a pipe.